ว้าวโอ้ไม่กอดมัมมี่สุดยอดดีเยมิโคสคิดของเธอเพิ่งออกมาแล้วก็มาพูดถึงว่าสถานที่ที่เธอมีอยู่ในทีมของเธอในฐานะของเธอเราจะดูว่าเธอมีสิทธิ์ที่จะเอาชนะแต่ในที่นี้ผมจะพูดอย่างที่ผมพูดในคลิปนี้ถ้าคุณพูดให้เธอเพราะเหตุใดเพราะอะไรนอกจากการแข่งขันไปเลยและฉันขอให้เธอสุดยอดดีวิดีโอนี้จะเป็นเรื่องที่เกี่ยวกับการแข่งขันและความสามารถในทีมของเธอและว่าถ้าคุณต้องการเธอในฐานะของคุณตามความจริงเราจะนำเสนอไปที่เว็บไซต์ของเธอซึ่งมีข้อมูลในทางออนไลน์ที่ไม่มีอยู่ดังนั้นในขณะที่เธอทำงานอยู่ในฐานะของเธอในที่นี้ในขณะที่เธอทำงานอยู่ในฐานะของเธอในที่นี้ในขณะที่เธอทำงานอยู่ในฐานะของเธอในที่นี้ในขณะที่เธอทำงานอยู่ในฐานะของเธอ At least her boss materials come from a boss that's already been released, which means we'll be able to pre-farm for her. It's from the double Vishap boss in Enkonomiya. There is, however, a secret material for her talents. I'm assuming this is probably going to be from the new Shadow Husk monsters in Enkonomiya that are going to be released in 2.5. Thankfully, these enemies seem to be quite slow, so they're likely not going to be much of a problem to fight. You are, however, going to definitely need to unlock Enkonomiya and activate as many of the waypoint teleports as you can if you want an easier time farming for these as soon as the 2.5 update drops. Here are her normal and charge attack animations. Animations look really good, as usual. Honestly, I don't understand how they keep coming up with these beautiful animations for all their new characters. And here's her skill, Yakan Evocation Seisho Sakura. So according to this and the 2.5 live stream. Casting this skill makes you dash in a certain direction, and you leave behind one of these electro fox totems a little bit behind where she stops dashing. Based on this footage and the one from the live stream, it doesn't seem to be in a set direction. You can probably decide which direction you want the dash to be in using your movement keys, but we'll have to confirm that when she's released. This skill has three charges, and you can only have up to three of these seisho sakuras out at the same time. So if you use sacrificial fragments and get an extra cast of this, you won't be able to get four of these out on the field. It doesn't seem to do any damage when casting, but it periodically hits one enemy nearby with electro damage. So it's more like a turret, but despite the effects making it look like it's an AOE attack, from this footage, it actually looks like it's just hitting one enemy. Or if it does have any AOE, it's got to be really tiny. I'm assuming each of them hits one enemy. At least that's what I hope. Otherwise, this really won't be much of a damage source. It seems to be a bit similar to a geo construct too, since it says right here that if they're put too close together, the old one will be destroyed. And it's in your best interest to have all three of these out at the same time, because each one you have out will increase all their levels, which increases the damage they do. And another reason why you want all three of them to be out is your burst. Great secret art, Tenko Kenshin. So imagine the first lightning bolt of Kujo Sara's burst, but it's followed up with more lightning bolts according to how many Seisho Sakuras you currently have out on the field. Now, as you can see here, the extra lightning bolts do a bit more damage than the initial one. That tells me that maybe the extra lightning bolts have a tiny, tiny bit higher scaling. These larger 6K and 8K numbers are probably crits. They probably have very low crit rate on this Yamiko for this footage and just didn't bother to keep retrying until they crit. You know, because they're not damage per screenshotters like a lot of the content creators. <laughs> now, now, I have nothing against it. Business is business. I'm just having some fun. Mihoyo didn't include her passives here, so we're gonna check it out on the version 2.5 special program. With her passive talent, the Shrine Sacred Shade, when Yaimiko uses her elemental burst, each Seishio Sakura destroyed resets the cooldown for one charge of her elemental skill. So when you use your burst, it'll reset the cooldown of your skill charges according to how many Seishio Sakuras, the electro turret thingies, you consume to do an extra lightning bolt in your burst. In short, you can immediately put the electro turrets back on the field, however many you consume during her burst. Right after doing her burst, so they can continue doing off-field damage and generating particles. After unlocking the talent and light and blessing, Yaimiko's elemental mastery will increase the damage dealt by the Seisho Sakura. According to how this is worded, and the fact that they're even adding a passive that increases the electro turret passive damage, makes me think that the scaling on it is probably not gonna be insignificant. Off the top of my head, she's probably the first and only character whose raw skill damage scales off of elemental mastery, not including elemental reactions. Okay, now that we know her kit, time to talk about what her place is in your team to help you decide whether or not she's worth your primo gems. 
Just looking at her kit, the first artifact set that comes to my mind is the 4-piece emblem, but my opinion is still subject to change, it really depends on the electro turrets and burst scalings. If her skill has high scaling, then it might also be worth it to build her with 2-piece Thundering Fury and 2-piece Gladiator or Shimanawa. If her skill damage scalings aren't that high, then it might be more worth it to put 4-piece Emblem on her since you get burst damage from 4-piece Emblem and you get energy recharge which helps you spam her burst more often and according to hearsay, she's gonna have a high energy cost burst and if that's true, 4-piece Emblem will be great on her. Which is good overall for you because that domain is in most cases the most value for resin you're ever gonna get when it comes to artifact farming. The two different artifact sets in that domain are at minimum usable on some characters and are absolutely amazing on others. Who knows, you might even already have a set ready for her and if that's the case, hey, good for you. And after finding out about her elemental mastery scaling passive, the first weapon that comes to mind is Widsith. Widsith has always been a great 4 star option for a lot of damage dealing characters, especially those who you just swap to, use your skill and your burst, and swap off of since it gives a huge buff for 8 seconds but has a 20 second cooldown. The buffs do have a bit of RNG in them, you can either get a huge attack buff, a huge elemental damage buff, or elemental mastery, which is really only usable by an animal character to increase swirl damage or if you're triggering a reaction with the character using it, and well, yes, maybe it is usable in the case where you are able to do an elemental reaction with the character using it, but for most people, most of the time, there's too much happening on the field, especially in Abyss where it's a time trial, and we're usually scrambling just to get as many skills, bursts, and attacks out in the name of saving seconds. In short, the elemental mastery buff the Widset gives is pretty significant when used right, but realistically, when are you going to be able to use it right? Whilst with Dave Miko, it's just built right into her kit. I get stronger with Elemental Mastery. So if you already have a Widsith raised and none of your significant characters use it, then you already have a weapon for Yei Miko. As for teams, according to her kit, it seems like she's going to slot right into mono electro teams, especially if it turns out that rumors are true and her burst really does cost a lot of energy. She's gonna need all the energy generated by other Electro characters, or she could be an alternative to Beidou or Official in Taser teams. But this is assuming her skill off-field damage has good scaling. If it doesn't, then she's really only gonna be a burst support that you can just slot right into any team you want. I can't tell you whether you need her or not, or whether she's worth your Prima Gems, since I don't know your specific situation. If you want help on brainstorming whether or not you should pull for her, leave a comment below, I'd love to help out. As for my accounts, I don't need her, she seems like she's just gonna be another straightforward damage dealer, at least that's what her kit looks like, we don't know her constellations yet. Maybe she has a cracked constellation that gives her a very specific utility that's just so godly and makes her into a must pull. But for most F2Ps, 5 star constellations aren't really much of an option. And if they are an option for you, I'm happy for you. And hey, maybe you can tell us about it when you get it. I already have complete teams of DPSs and supports that are decently built and characters that don't seem like they'll be phased out anytime soon by the continuingly harder Abyss content. If you guys want me to do a sort of walkthrough of my accounts to give you an idea of what kind of account might not need Yaimiko, let me know in the comments.